our national anthem. Hello, my name is Eugene Yelchin. I'm an author and illustrator of books for young readers. Frankly, I find illustrating easier than writing, mainly because I've been making art a lot longer. I began drawing pictures when I was little, about this little, but I did not write my first middle grade novel until I was old, about this old. The reason for such a late start is this. I didn't know how to speak English let alone know how to write in it, until I was in my mid-thirties. I had been speaking and writing in Russian until then. Russia, when I still lived there, was called the USSR, or the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. If you think the name was long, take a look at an old map. One-sixth of the world was painted red just to make the name fit. But no matter how vast were our borders, they were so perfectly guarded that nobody could sneak in. Nobody could sneak out either. But I managed to do just that. When I was 27 years old, I immigrated to the United States. In Russia, I had always wanted to become an American and I had often pretended to be one with my friends. I listened to American music, watched old American movies and dressed in fake homemade American clothes. But when I finally found myself in the US, I realized that I imagined America all wrong. I didn't know how to become a real American and I had no clue what to do with my new unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I had my life, I had my liberty, but to pursue happiness was such a foreign concept that I began to suspect that in order for me to become an American, I had to stop being Soviet first. The transition from a Soviet to an American was an immense undertaking, and it took many years. Did I succeed? Not entirely, but one terrific thing did happen. In order to make sense of what held me back, I began writing about my past. It occurred to me that my struggle to change and to grow was a story a story in which I was a protagonist. Besides, I was in a possession of information about the USSR and the experience of living behind the Iron Curtain that was not well known and could be useful to the young American readers. I didn't need to invent very much to write myself into a story. In my real, everyday life, I had to accomplish a difficult task that every classic story protagonist must accomplish I knew what I wanted, I had a strong goal, but somehow I had to change myself from within in order to achieve it. Studying classic literature was a great help. I began to notice that in well-told stories, the protagonist's transformation is inevitable and yet somehow surprising. In order to succeed, a protagonist has to find courage to leave behind what was familiar once and comforting but no longer useful, even harmful, since it prevented the protagonist from achieving the goal, which was exactly what I had to do in my new American life. Here are two of my books in which I used myself to create the protagonists. My first book, Breaking Stalin's Nose, and my last one, Genius Under the Table. In Breaking Stalin's Nose, a version of my younger self is a protagonist in a story set in the USSR under the rule of a ruthless dictator, Joseph Stalin. The protagonist's name is Sasha Zajcik. Sasha wants to be a hero and a communist like his father and like his idol, Comrade Stalin. When his father is arrested on Stalin's orders, Sasha slowly realizes that in order to become a communist, he must sacrifice his moral values, his integrity, and his sense of justice. In Genius Under the Table, the protagonist is me, Evgeny Yelchin. Evgeny wants to become a great artist, but he lacks courage. He fearfully navigates the complicated world of his family, a communal apartment in which his family lives in one small room, art classes at school, 
and by extension the entire world of his country. A country in which fear is shared by all, in which silence is the means of self-preservation, in which everyday life is unthinkable without lying. Evgeny's growing sense of disillusionment with his parents and with his country is complicated by his intense love for his family and his home. Breaking Stalin's Nose is a work of fiction, while Genius Under the Table is a memoir, a work of non-fiction. Yet the boundaries between what is fiction and what is non-fiction are blurred in this book. Fiction is written as a non-fictional account of real events, while non-fiction strives for dramatic or comedic effects. The protagonists of these two books are versions of myself, one imagined and one real. But the boundary between those two selves, real and imagined, is as blurred as a boundary between fiction and non-fiction genres. Both stories suggest a possible success, but they do not describe it. Both stories are left open-ended. Will my protagonists ever succeed? Will I? Perhaps it's not all that important. To quote Anton Chekhov, a 19th century Russian short stories writer and a playwright, the role of the artist is to ask questions, not to answer them. I began writing because I had a lot of questions about myself and because I did not know how to answer them. I needed to understand my past in order to make sense of my present and make plans for my future. Breaking Stalin's Nose and Genius Under the Table are my personal narratives, written about two young boys slowly and painfully and often in spite of themselves moving from the oppression toward liberation, toward freedom. In the end, my books, not unlike my real life, turn out to be about freedom and about the unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. By writing these books, I was helping myself. But my hope is that in looking through the eyes of Sasha Zaychik and Evgeny Yelchin, the young readers might view their unalienable rights in a slightly different light. They might become more attentive to what they inherited. They might consider that preserving those rights requires personal courage. They might not take the pursuit of happiness lightly. That, in fact, as my protagonists show, happiness is sometimes only achieved at great risk of both life and liberty.